The world is a vampire. Santa Drain. Secret destroyers. Hold you up to the flames. And why do I get. <laughs> Cadillac right now. <laughs> 205, two days ago. Lightest I've been probably since 2000. Shit. Late 15, early 16. So I ate Dairy Queen last night. Woke up at 206. Feeling good. My little hammy cramp thing's gone, so. Try to hit a. One heavy single here, a couple back down singles. We're gonna try to deadlift some doubles, close grip bench. And then we got a speaking engagement at Sacramento State University in a couple days. So uh, Connor and I are gonna roll to some tech place where all the nerds hang out and try to grab like a lav mic. I think that's what it's called. Comment below, nerds. Couple weeks, and we'll be back on Twitch. Everyone, you know, like I put out that Drake thing with that, I was excited. It was like, oh, you stream? You play video? Like, bitch, I was doing it for a month straight. In the link below, Silent M one K K E on Twitch. You can go follow. We'll, we'll be live. It'll be, it'll be on and popping in a little while. At least three, four times a week. We'll see. We're taking your questions. Comment below questions you guys want answered or if you want a video on the topic or be sure to follow me, Solid Mike, 2Ks. Enjoy this training footage. Enjoy these answers. When I squat, my mid to lower back hurts for a couple days after. How should I fix that? It's a broad. Question, you're gonna get a broad rant. Now when we're training, soreness is bound to happen. Um, we have to start to define what hurts, what's tweaked, and what's maybe injured, and then what's regular soreness. So if you're brand new to lifting, you're brand new to doing anything, any new stimulus will make you sore or feel a little bit of pain. Uh, I haven't been running for a long time. If I just run a mile or less, I'm gonna be sore or in pain because it's a new stimulus that my body's not used to. Um, even deadlifting, right? So I'm doing doubles, I'm doing triples, I'm building back my volume. If I all, all of a sudden did a set of 10, or three sets of 10, it's a brand new stimulus, it's outside of the zone that I've been in, and I'm probably gonna feel some pain or soreness. If you're squatting your mid-back is hurting, um, it could be technique, could be regular soreness, or um, I doubt it, but it could be an injury. So we have to first just define what those things are going on, and that's kind of the idea of programming and progression, is that there's no just stimulus out of left field thrown at you, uh, that there's some type of progression to get you where you're going. So um, you, know, you wouldn't just be doing five sets of one, uh, for four weeks progressing in weight and then all of a sudden do 10 sets of 10. Uh, there's no logical progression there. So that is kind of that. What nutrition tips do you have for someone with a fast metabolism? Now, I don't, wouldn't just automatically say your metabolism is fast or not. Oftentimes, you know, there's a decent range that everybody kind of sits in and it's more likely that you're just inconsistent with your calorie intake. And if you want to gain weight, we need to be in a calorie surplus. So say, with your lifestyle, what you do, how you exercise, plus your genetics, you need 2,000 calories to, say, to stay 150 pounds. Chances are, throughout a week, throughout a month, that's the average you're eating, whether you think you're eating a lot or not. So what we need to do is eat 2,200, 2,500 a day consistently for a long period of time if you want to gain weight. Tips for that? Eat some calorie-dense foods. You know, there's a lot of different types of foods out there. Yes, some junk foods, uh, ice creams and cakes and pastries have more calories per volume of food. If you're eating salads all day, it's gonna be hard to get 2,500 calories in. Uh, but there's also healthy foods that have the same things. Avocado, some fruits, uh, you know, steaks, et cetera, eggs even. Um, so find some more calorie dense foods to mix in peanut butter, nut butters. <laughs> no, I'm saying. So you start to mix those things in and then it's easier to get your calories up without filling up your little boy tummy. It's probably your little boy tummy that's causing the issues, not your metabolism. Not bad, buddy. Try to build this up in waves of two. Got about three weeks of this. Hopefully by the end of that, my diet will be done. Then I'll be able to eat a little bit more food. And then we're gonna judge what goals are next. Long-term goal, pull 800 pounds with abs. 
That's maybe three, four, five year goal. Short term goal, get below 200 pounds. Medium term goal, hit a big PR at 198 pounds. So mini, mini, medium, big. Slurp juice, jug, 50. Come on, Fortnite. Bro, post rehab exercises for your injuries and supplements you take and things you do for recovery. Now, we'll go one by one. Supplements, all I really take is caffeine. Uh, there are some supplements out there that have been proven that may help, some kind of fish oil, maybe a multivitamin, creatine, maybe it's Maybelline, but I don't take any of those. I prefer to just drink caffeine because I love it. I love coffee and uh, I forget to take supplements and I don't want to put my money into it. I just eat foods. Recovery. Recovery, the only thing you can really do is consistent nutrition, consistent sleep, and a program that kind of uh, balances the volume and progression for yourself. Uh, there are some things that may or may not help, you know, uh, mixed studies, mixed reviews, uh, mixed science, but, uh, you know, it, it's shown that maybe ice baths may help a little bit, uh, a 10 to 15 minute walk or light cardio after your training sessions may help a little bit, maybe some uh, stim machines may help a little bit, um, maybe some massage may help a little bit, but 98% of your recovery is gonna be based on adequate nutrition, adequate sleep, and balancing your progression and your programming. What do I do to rehab? Well, if you just go back in these videos, we showed a lot of it. Um, you know, personally, I just want to take time off mentally and physically from squats and deads, so that was the basis of my rehab. Uh, I did a little bit of belt squatting. I did a little bit of unilateral work. I'm still trying to mix in that unilateral work because I think that helps me stay safe. So lunges or one-legged movements, Bulgarian split squats, things of that nature. Um, I'm doing some side planks and lunges to warm up. Um, Stuart McGill, uh, I forgot what the three he is, magical three, three some something, but he has a kind of warm up that uh, helps kind of uh, activate and engage that core, uh, the stomach, before you start to lift just to, you know, exercise prep is kind of the thing, uh, to get your mind uh, ready to activate those things so you can breathe and brace properly under load, valsalvas, uh, under squat and deadlifts. That's about all I did. Uh, then slowly managed my volume building back up and I still am. Today was the most volume I handled. Uh, it was five sets of two on deadlifts. So uh, slowly building and I know five sets of two isn't much, especially compared to what I used to do, but uh, slowly, surely. We should go rollerblading. Did you rollerblade as a kid? Uh, I ice skated, I had an ice skating arena, like right near my house. Rollerblading was like the thing, bro. Every party from like second grade to like sixth grade was rollerblading. And then seventh grade to like eighth grade was laser tag. For me, it was it was ice skating instead of rollerblading. Bro, and music like this is just playing the whole time. You're gonna tear a hamstring. Bro, I would, <laughs> I would fuck some shit up. Even as a kid, that's like the only time as a kid I remember being sore. Like as a kid, I never got sore or tired or out of breath. I didn't really get out of breath doing that, but I would the next day be sore. And I'm like, fuck, dude, what is this feeling? I do one round around that fucking ring. Dude, I used to crush it too. Are the AMRAP sets in the Infinite Off Season Kaizen program supposed to be all out or save some? Uh, save some, uh, depending on the goal, but typically this is kind of an off-season program. It's a way for you to customize it. Again, I just wrote it blankly, but we I did an entire video. Hopefully I'll remember to link it below, talking about how you can customize it for yourself, things you can change, different ideas of exercise variation and rep schemes or progressions. Um, but most AMRAPs and most things in the gym, I always like to save one if not two in the tank. So if you want to go by RPEs, RPE eight and a half or nine, um, just because one, technical efficiency, two, uh, kind of a workout hangover, whatever you might want to call it. If you go all out, like actually all out physically, it's going to uh, affect your next session too much and performance will go down. Where our goal is always to have consistently improving performance and be able to progress in load, volume, weight, intensity, et cetera. So save some in the tank. Don't let it all out at once. I know there's like a dirty term for that, but I can't think of it. Don't blow your load. That's what I was thinking. It's been a long workout, friends. I am going to go buy some new audio equipment. Maybe we'll see you in the gym and then Sac State. Thanks, bye.